Well, on the bench today, we have a Uniden Bearcat 980 SSB. This is the uh, earlier version, so it's a different circuit board than the current production one. I prefer this one because this one can be aligned. I mean, the newer ones can be aligned, but they've done away with a lot of the adjustments. Um, so a lot of these transformers, they're just no longer in there. So, uh, you know, unfortunately in radios like that, it is what it is because there's no adjustment left for some some of the circuits in the radio so your receiver yeah it's just kind of whatever it is out of the box and that's what you're stuck with um, but other points of course still have have uh, alignment points but uh so this radio was sent in to get uh for starters a new display board um so here is the original This is the original factory one, came out of the radio, minus the mic jack, which is <laughs> was added to this one. Um, so we took this one out, not because it didn't work, but because the customer wanted a channel expansion board installed. So if we look down in there, we can see we now have a black board. So yes, we have one of Mark's channel boards in here. Um, and someone had done uh, this red wire here. I didn't install that. This uh, the customer, I guess, at some point in time, or it may. I don't know if he got this used or not. But uh, at some point, someone had unlocked the clarifier. The problem is they unlocked it incorrectly. Uh, the red wire, no problem. That's the voltage source to run voltage to the clarifier control. The pro and they they cut the wire like you're supposed to. The problem is they didn't remove the trimmer resistor. So actually, the little wire in the way right there located right there on those three pads there's supposed to be a little trimmer resistor you know like one of those it was still in the radio <laughs> and the, the clarifier unlock the, it's unlocked your transmit frequency will shift with the clarifier but the problem is if you leave that uh, trimmer resistor in there that still affects the uh, frequency so if you turn it you know hook up a frequency counter when you're trying to do the alignment, and that's what actually what happened to me, I was like, "Why well, I can't get it aligned right. I was like, what the hell's going on? And then it dawned on me, the trimmer resistor was still in there. I was like, wait a minute, hot wire, the wire's cut. So yeah, I pulled that out. All was right with the world. <laughs> I could properly get the frequency uh, alignment done on this. Um, so other than that, uh, yeah, pretty much a stock radio. I do, I did notice just here uh, shortly. Um, there is one thing I need to do. Oh, looks like I bumped the channel display there. I want it on 19. Yeah. Um, I need to reinstall someone. Kind of, pardon my French, half-assed. <laughs> Remove the resistor for the beep modification or the beep. What's known as the beep delete modification, because anybody's familiar with these radios. They have that horribly, horribly loud beep sound in this original version of the radio. Um, Mark has solved that with his board, because that's controlled by the microprocessor. So, of course, when he programmed his microprocessor for his board, um, he made that adjustable. So, actually, there's two adjustments on his board. You'll see there's a little trimmer. Get the reflection right. There's a trimmer resistor right there and there. One of those is for the uh, key beep so that beep tone, the factory beep tone, and then the other trimmer resistor sets the level for the Roger beep, because Mark's board has Roger beeps as well. Um, but yeah, so I, I have to reinstall, and actually they, they didn't take the whole thing out, it looks like they just took a pair of pliers and broke the top of the resistor off, I don't know, it was a half-assed way of doing it, so I need to reinstall a, a resistor back in there. Um, that way the, the key beep, you know, when you push a button, the key beep will actually work. Um, so that's about it. Uh, it's a good working little radio. I mean, these things are not power monsters by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but they, they do receive pretty good. Um, they're not the most stellar performers in the world. But uh, they do work okay. Um, and just to go to show that, we have it on, actually, right now it's on channel 19, upper sideband. I have it hooked up to the communications test set. Um, if we turn the volume up. You can see I have the level set ah, back here, camera. I have the level set to 0.05 microvolts, and we have a 
eh, just make it 19 dB synad. So yeah, it, I run out of run out of uh, being able to turn the signal generator down. I can't turn it down any farther. So it receives really well on sideband. If we switch to AM. I'd call that one 0.12 microvolts, or oop, minus 125.4 dBm. So sideband was greater than, or actually less than, minus 133 dBm, and AMs, uh, like I say, right around 12 dB synod at minus 125.4. So that's really good. Um, and just to show we actually have have the frequencies aligned, we actually have the President McKinley up here that McKinley kindly donated to me uh, for review and whatnot. And by the way, um, I will now be doing uh, warranty work for President. So uh, somebody has a President that's still in warranty, I can I can do your warranty repairs now. Um, I'm going to uh, apparently also going to be getting some uh, other models of the President radios. They're going to be sending them to me to do reviews on. Um, and within the next year, they're supposed to have a bunch of new models of radios available in the U.S. So, yeah, keep an eye out on President, man. They're good quality radios, and they, they really seem to be uh, trying to storm the market and take over. <laughs> so... You probably can't have see for the reflection. There we go. See, we were on channel 19 there. And what are we in? We're in upper sideband. Put this one in upper sideband. Audio 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And switch over to lower sideband. Audio 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And switch to AM. Audio 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So, that's how she sounds on air. And that's with the uh, stock Bearcat microphone. Nothing fancy there. So, yep, this has one of Mark's boards. So, yes, this thing keeps going. It's like the Energizer Bunny. Now, the channel digits stop. Um, no, I'm actually going the wrong, direc wrong direction. <laughs> but the channel digits actually stop once you get up to 99 because this is still the factory display. So actually, I need to suck that display off of you know, the customer's original board, and then that will get installed on the next one of Mark's boards. But yeah, you actually reuse the glass. The actual display is, the, is you reused out of the radio. But So you're, on, you're left with two digits. There's, there's no way to add an, a third digit to get into the hundreds. So once you get to 99, once you go one channel higher than that, it just displays 00. zero but you still have the frequency display here, so you can still tell where you're at. But we go up to 505, and then once you turn one more time, it flips down to the lower side. So 26.505. So this covers uh, 2 megahertz. So 26.505. To 28.505. So you can see we've got four point. Stop talking. So four watts on 28.505 and 26.505. Five point two watts. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't know that. Man, this thing really picks up transmit power on the bottom end. And this is actually center tuned um, to channel forty. Because <laughs> most users they want extra channels. They're in, in. They're usually in sideband. So radios with lots of channels like these, I'll usually tune them at uh, center tune them for channel forty because that gives them the kind of the center of where all the sideband action is. You know, between like thirty six and. You know, a couple channels up from 40. That's where most of your sideband action happens. So, yeah, this thing actually has... <laughs> the power really kicks out at the low at the, uh, the low frequencies. But, uh, yep, and then you can go into... Uh, let's see, push the channel button. You can change the colors. So, you know, whichever color floats your boat. 
contrast, brightness, um, set PA. Now this does not have an amplifier in it, but if you do install an amplifier, what you can do is is change the PA button so it's an option controller. You can then attach a wire to this to Mark's channel board and it will turn the amplifier on and off. So makes it nice so you don't have you don't need to add a toggle switch outside of the radio to uh, control the uh, to turn the amplifier on and off. Um, there's the Roger beep, so if you want Roger beeps, you can select one of actually uh, actually let me just put it on one back out of this exit uh, what's that radio on channel 19 and that one is okay so there you can actually hear them now let's get back in there again so And then there's nothing when you have it set to zero zero. I kind of like I kind of like that. I'm not a Roger B person. Don't use them, but I think that's the coolest one. <laughs> so I'll turn that back off. And like I say, you can turn the beep uh, on and off. So the, the the key beep. Anytime you push a button, you do anything on these radios in the factory conf configuration, they do a beep. Like I say, people remove that resistor, it eliminates the beep. Um, so you can turn the beep on or off, and when it's turned on, unlike the original radios where you could not uh, the volume was not adjustable, it was just booming loud. Um, once I put that resistor back in there, then with the, the trimmer on this board up here, you'll be able to actually set the beep volume. So, um, and then we have talkback. Um, so you can set talkback volume from 1 to... Uh, 15 suggest one one is is loud enough the talkback circuit they have in this rate because we gotta remember talkback is a factory it's factory installed on these radios but yeah it's an insane level so just leave it on one for talkback and the di normal diagnostic just like the original and then exit um, the one nice thing about the way he has this set up is uh, talkback you know light comes on lets you know the talkback's enabled the RF gain, you can just hit the button, the RF gain comes on, and then you can adjust the RF gain. You don't have to be in receiver transmit for your um, to adjust the RF gain or mic gain. So you can turn that off, turn the mic gain on. You don't have to be in transmit to adjust your mic gain. So, again, that's nice. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, nice little... Bearcat 980 SSB. Uh, all I got to do is install that one. One would actually remove the fragments of that resistor. Uh, pop a new, uh, a new one in there, and uh, I can get the the key beep working. So if the customer wants to use the key beep, he can turn that function on and off, and uh, be ready to box it up. And actually, the next radio I have to work on for the same customer is actually one of those. <laughs> he sent a President McKinley in to have. Uh, the uh, clarifier unlocked on it, so I'll get this one put put back together and uh, start on the McKinley next. So there you go, unit in 980 SSB with a uh, two megahertz of uh, channel range or frequency range.